Hey, Snickers, but tonight, bonjour, tonight we've got Linux Mint 10 Julia KDE 64 bit. I'm going to make a quick look around to see what it's like. Now, if you install it on a full machine, so it's a full install, quad core, CPU, blah, 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 Q6600, it's got one of the new NVIDIA cards in it. I think it works alright. Seems to, anyway. But yeah, seems to be okay. Install went fine, and stuff like that. There are some known problems, so we'll have a quick look on their web page, and we'll get rid of that. There we go. Comes up alright. Got a bit of a slow internet connection again tonight. Bummer. VLC slow to open. Yes, it is a little bit. Oh, what's the other bit? Oh, Moonlight was the other bit. Now, I have installed this, the new updated Moonlight, and it seems to work fine. So, no big deals there, really. Do you think not? So, what else can I show you? I'll open that up again. Not much more, really, but that comes up all the time if you don't untick the box. So, we go to the menu, basic KD menu, really. So, you've got Copet for your Messenger, and Rock for your Music Player, Quizzy Rizzle, and Firefox for your browsing. Fire, the Thunderbird, System Settings Terminal, and Applications. We'll go to uh, Graphics first. There's plenty here for you to play with, including Gimpy and some Panorama stuff for doing bits and bobs, and some new photo viewers, that's alright. Got K-Torrent there, Blue Devil for your Bluetooth stuff, there's feeders there, IRC clients, and microblog clients, and stuff like that. There's nothing new that you haven't seen. Now, all that install went rather well, some things don't actually work very well, and I'll show you what I mean. Okay, so you've got Amrock on that there. But your desktop rec recorder doesn't actually work if you click it. So I had to go the CLI way to get this done, which is just as easy. No problem, really. You get DVD there as well to try and install, just to make sure it worked from their menu, well, from the software center. We've also got Minitube for a YouTube client. So what I'm going to do, I'm going to type me in. So I'm going to type in the Sneaky Linux. And we'll click it and see what we got. So there's some of my stuff there. That's most relevant and whatever you have, Zorin's there. Most recent. Now, look at he here. Some guy from the Emerald Isle, who's been drinking a bit of black stuff, has done an interview with me, apparently. No, he didn't know. He's having a bit of a laugh at one of my videos. I don't big deal about it. I'll take a sip out of people. He can do it to me. No big deal at all. Go and have a look at it and have a laugh. I did anyway. And I told him so. But you should really ask first. Really, shouldn't you? But anyway, no big deal. So, Minitube works, we'll get rid of that. And next we'll go back down to the menu. Thank you. Applications. We're going to Office. Now, there's not much Office stuff there, really, is there? So, apart from the Open Office, I would have thought K Office or LibreOffice, I thought they would have installed in that one, really. But no, they didn't. So, so you get your backup tools. Domain blocker. This is one thing I've always liked about Linux Mint. They always put one of these in. So if you've got kids that use the system, you don't have to go to certain sites, you add to the name, domain even, click OK, and off you go. Bob's your uncle. OK, back down to the menu again. It's a really short one, really. It's not a very long one, because other people have already done it, really. I don't want you to redo really it again. So the software manager. We'll open him up and see what we got in there. And as you see, it's the Ubuntu Software Center. Although this li little thing is going to be seen a lot in the next few years, shall I say, it's going to be taken up as a standard for uh, installing Linux applications in different distributions. The news people can tell you all about that. I'm just showing you this distro, you know what I'm saying? But anyway, there's plenty in this section for you to install and do whatever you want to. Now, Skype is here, so I'm going to click on Skype and install. And it wants to be password again, which is fine by me. And off we go. And if it goes installing, does some stupid things. We wait a bit longer, we wait a bit longer, we wait a bit longer. And in theory, that should be installed. Now, the 64 bit version, every time I use Linux Mint or Ubuntu 64 bit, it never goes quite perfect when you're doing stuff. So, not SY normally keeps the 32 bit stuff. So, really, I really need to see some improvement there, really, at the end of the day. But yeah, it works. Let's have a look. Let's see if it's in multimedia. No, it's not there. Yeah, I might have to reboot to get it to come up. Who knows? Go down there. Can I see it? Can I see it? I've probably just gone past it or something. I don't know. But as I said to you before, this is just a really quick video to show you bits and bobs of the next minute 10 to 64 bit KDE. Now, after I've had it on the system for a couple of days, it seemed to settle down really nice, and I got on with it okay, and the kids really like it, because all the little KD app things, and the bouncing balls, and stuff like that. Don't really appeal to me, but they love it, don't get me wrong. And there's plenty of new applications here for you to play with. Now, on the whole, it's okay. But I think I still recommend the 32-bit for the average user for now. So that's me anyway. Sneaky Linux going out. I'll see you later. Bye-bye.